Hello students, welcome to Easy Elimu Learning Simplified. I am your teacher, Mr. Stanley Ombogo. So, uh, dear students, this is a continuation of our Parliament of Alls plot analysis by uh, Adipo Sidang. And in this session, we are going to look at Act 2 plot summary. So, when looking at uh, Act 2 plot summary, we are going to look at, uh, you know, uh, what happens, uh, uh, like what we have. Uh, in the plot generally. And again, we are also going to be uh, able to identify that is uh, some of the major or the key events that we have in this act. So the major events or the key events can sometimes be called striking events uh, simply because they uh, normally take uh, or, uh, you know, catches the reader's attention. So, uh, Dear students, in this act, we are going to uh, talk about that is the Moonlight Law. So remember, Moonlight Law was uh, introduced earlier in Act 1. And uh, it was, uh, that is, uh, the Moneybags idea. And uh, he is also the one who funded uh, this idea. So uh, having uh, looked for, uh, that is, uh, Telltale, the woodpecker, who refused, but uh, later on, uh, was uh, helped by a room TD, that is the ground hornbill. So apart from the moonlight uh, uh, law that we are uh, going to discuss in this act, dear students, uh, there is also uh, something that we are going to look at, that is money bag scanning and dealing with dissent. So what about Act 2, dear students of Parliament of Alls? So talking about Act 2, the action occurs in the chambers of the Parliament of Alls. So the curtain rises to reveal Mr. Speaker, who severally doubles as the all moneybags on stage wearing a lion's mane, which apparently is the Speaker's wig. So business opens with the owls rising and pledging loyalty to Royal Owl. Socialite Owl rises on a point of order to draw the Speaker's attention to the fact that the makeup bill isn't included in the business order of the day, but Moneybugs offers to buy her all the makeup she needs. So the socialite owl thanks Moneybugs for the successful passing of the bill that ensures owls will have fried rats, baked mice, honey, and mayonnaise, saying that even Feathered Beak and the, uh, that is the rebel owls joined in the celebration of that bill. So remember when we are talking about uh, that is uh, the rebel uh, owls, dear students, uh, we have the Feathered Beak owl, the Iron Lady owl, and lastly, the Straight Eyed owl. So uh, what happens or what follows is that uh, money bugs thanks the Feathered Beak and Iron Lady for this, uh, then introduces debate on the Moonlight Bill, that is having thanked them for, uh, you know, passing and celebrating the bill that will ensure that alls have new sets of meals. So the Feathered Beak says that uh, the aforementioned bill will compensate them, while Iron Lady says it was an amistice, and today they are more determined to defeat the agents of backwardness and dictatorship in the kingdom, meaning that they are not going to vote in favor of the Moonlight Bill. So the speaker rules her out of order, and uh, he oscillates around the speaker's chair, doubling as himself and as Moneybugs. So Moneybugs threatens the rebel owls, accusing them of uh, working on behalf of someone else in their disrespect for the royal owl. So the street-eyed owl accuses moneybugs of ceaseless looting and insulting owls that have greater thinking capacity uh, than the entire kitchen cabinet of the royal owl. So uh, in return, moneybugs accuses him of treason and demands that he withdraws. So the street eyed declines to withdraw and the feathered big owl accuses the speaker of double speak using the full authority of his office, that is ex-cathedra. 
So both money bags and red string accuse uh, the straight-eyed owl of insulting the parliament by calling it a cathedral. <laughs> Funny. So I already accuses them of illiteracy and ineptitude and of having been appointed as high office owls in spite of having been mere cooks in the royal owl's kitchen. So they are embarrassed to the uh, uh, parliament and red string is a puppet of money bugs. So just like other owls from the string family. So what happens again is that the socialite owl demands that the iron lady withdraws accusing her of comparing money bugs to chickens. So iron lady accuses them of being cowardly. That is by uh, saying they are being lily livered lizards. So uh, money bugs demands that the iron lady be thrown out for alluding that royal owl is cowardly. So uh, Iron Lady uh, further criticizes such a luxury as eating lizards every night when other birds have to fly kilometers to find water. So the feathered beak accuses the speaker of being out of order for being unfair in uh, the session, that is since the session began. So the Iron Lady again criticizes the socialite all for openly insulting a member of the house, thereby disrespecting the house with her insults. So uh, what happens this, uh, next, uh, dear students, is that the speaker rules uh, that Iron Lady uh, is out of order and denies her a chance to vote, then orders her out. So Red String and socialite all eagerly drag her out. So uh, again, the socialite all thanks the speaker for his wisdom at ejecting the noise uh, maker, who after all is not even a noise maker. So uh, another character, Black String, enters and after whispering to money bugs, the latter accuses uh, the feather big uh, owl, uh, that is uh, of, uh, of some, uh, s s some ill intentions within the owls. So the feathered beak in return accuses the loyalists of uh, stifling the voices of dissent. So Moneybugs accuses uh, the, the feathered beak and straight eyed of double standards that both never criticized the bill that increased their compensation from one fried rat a day to three fried rats frogs baked mice with honey and mayonnaise. So if you look at this act, dear students, it is full of accusations in the parliament of all. So it is a fight between the uh, loyalists vis-a-vis -vis the rebel, the rebel owls. So what happens next is that the straight eyed argues that they deserved it while money bags accuses them of rebelling only because they have nothing to gain from the current bill, that is the Moonlight moonlight Law or the Moonlight Tax Bill. So uh, what happens, uh, what follows is that the debate is closed and the voting is hurried through and the bill passed into law. So Iron Lady uh, re-enters and joins the general clamor of uh, protest of the other to rebels. So the straight-eyed uh, owl tries to protest the passing of the bill because it gags rebel owls, taxes birds already facing imminent hunger and undermines the rights of birds that twitter in the moonlight and omnivores as well. So he is asked to petition uh, the committee of vultures so the angry feathered beak accuses money bugs of controlling courts, creating inefficient committees and spreading lies and propaganda through uh, a room TD. So uh, the street uh, I'd all adds that Telltale had earlier been sent to spread lies and that there is a plot to kill some birds, including him. So the Iron Lady adds that the new law is money bugs plot to loot because all they know 
uh, is a uh, hoot and what? Hoot and loot. So Moneybags accuses the rebels of zealously. Uh, um, I mean, he accuses uh, the rebels of uh, zealously uh, not being included in royal house cabinet. So Iron Lady accuses him of being drunk with power, which angers Moneybags to the extent that as sergeant at arms, he kicks the rebels out. Then celebration follows. So uh, in this um, act, dear students, uh, Moneybag is, uh, is, uh, uh, is representing himself at the same time. He is the speaker of the house. And at the same time, he is also the sergeant at arms. So the act, th th this, uh, th this act is very interesting. So uh, the loyal owls plan a homecoming party, that is to celebrate the new, the new law that they have just passed. So red, uh, the red string is sent to instruct a room TD to make arrangements for the party because he is always hungry and does everything to impress. So Moneybags confesses that we will, uh, I mean that they will use, uh, that is uh, a room TD and finally dump him for there is no other use for hornbills and they will use the moonlight law to gag him and finally send him to the gallows. So he is felt to be a threat now that uh, he, know, he already knows too much. So Red String says Hornbill was mad to think he could be protected by the moonlight law. So Moneybugs add that Hornbill is crazy because he attacks his own reflection in water. That is why he is paid peanuts. So the socialite all is tickled and the prospect, uh, that is at the prospect of a uh, hornbill attacking his reflection at water stone point, then exits. So Moneybugs and Red Spring plan the celebrations. Hornbill must not attend. So children will be found to sing freedom songs. Then we also told that Moneybugs is worried that Osogo keeps playing his flute and singing band songs. So uh, he could be sending coded messages. So this is what this is what uh, money bugs. This is what money bugs think that uh, the fact that uh, Osogo plays uh, his flute uh, to some uh, to, to some coded uh, or to some language that uh, he fails to understand. So he feels like in a way uh, Osogo could be sending coded uh, messages to the other animals. So Red String assures him that the light, uh, uh, that is the moonlight law, will silence birds such as Osogo and Oyundi. So both hear the distance noise of a room TD, which worries money bugs even more. But Red String lies, dear students, that a room TD is a praying royal owl and the parliament. But what we know or what is going on is that a room TD is up in arms. A room TD is protesting. So money bag real, uh, the money bags realizes that a room TD is inciting other birds and gives red string orders for a room TD's expulsion, that is elimination. So uh, the, uh, that is, uh, the red string is given orders to take a room TD to the Waterstone point and leave him there. So black string enters and informs money bugs that a room TD has incited other birds and there is a rebellion. So uh, money bugs sends red string for one eyed and the latter exits. So black string informs money bugs that according to police owl, night birds are planning a demonstration to protest moonlight law. So money bugs assures black string that they'll use the vultures and the crows um, who they will, uh, who they still have on their side, that is. But Blackstreet reminds him that the vultures were short chained while the sacred tree was grabbed from the crows and turned into a secret watchtower. So 10 crow families were displaced and birds are heard chanting anti-owl slogans 
in the distance. So apparently, even the people that they think are still on their sides are no, are no longer with them. And uh, they are about to join in the rebellion. So Moneybags orders Black String to uh, double Telltale's offer and have Oliktiga, the bat, who has biting teeth, and the bat army guard the parliament and the royal trees. So he informs uh, Moneybags that Oyundi hasn't been seen lately, and the rumor goes that Moneybags had her arrested when he saw her fly from a secret meeting with the hair, and that on Chongorio, who is also Yundi's friend, is busy spreading these rumors. So remember, uh, the hair is uh, referred to as the uh, Ogila Nyakorando uh, in the story. So Manibag says Oyundi is wanted uh, for severely embarrassing the king. So he clarifies that he wants to deal with the rebel owls for letting out secrets of the owls, uh, demystifying parliament and exposing the weaknesses of the owls. So another thing that happens is that uh, the Black Spring is dispatched to uh, deal with the protesters. Now, tired, the money bag falls into uh, a seat and begins uh, reminiscing. So he is happy that he has been able to deal with the rebel owls who tried to stop him from gaining the tender for the care of all little birds. So this way, uh, he is able to control both the population and the minds of the birds to counter, to counter dissent. So uh, what follows, dear students, uh, what follows uh, here is that uh, he has a dream, he has a dream, which reveals his varied fears. So first, he hears a voice which turns out to be Oyundi. He accuses Oyundi of crossing the borders to work with uh, their enemies. <clears throat> Sorry. So Oyundi in turn reveals he knows of the golden bead, which is a royal secret. She says the birds are coming to take over the parliament and abandon all laws passed in favor of the owls. So the Moonlight Law won't be passed and several other laws will be repealed as well. So Moneybugs threatens her while Oyundi uh, guards him. So those are some of the things that uh, happen dear students. So uh, lastly, he exits, that is Oyundi exits uh, as Osogo enters, claiming he is playing his flute right in the middle of the royal trees. So Moneybugs mistakes the flute for a knife and begs not to be, not to be killed. So uh, what uh, also happens, uh, dear students, is that Osogo demands to know who is responsible for the weaver massacre. That is the weaver uh, bird massacre. And uh, Moneybug blames Royal Owl. And uh, what follows is that Osogo also exits. So uh, what follows is that the Royal Owl enters and demands to know why Moneybug has mentioned uh, his name in vain. So Moneybug uh, pleads uh, his loyalty, comparing Royal Owl to a man. Royal all reminds him that he has been told not to compare the king with man, and he describes uh, man as that featherless creature who messes the earth by cutting trees and polluting rivers. So uh, the only birds who should probably praise man are hens and sparrows, that is according to the royal owl. So uh, Moneybugs praises royal owl, who tells him that he can see uh, he is happy with the new moon, then asks him what he can see on the moon. So Moneybug says he can see hair on the moon. So the royal owl tells him hair isn't on the moon for he cannot fly. He's only on Moneybug's mind. So uh, Moneybug agrees and so is Oyundi. 
So Roll All tells him that enemies are creation of the holes. Uh -huh. And there are only two tribes of birds. That is owls and other birds. So owls create enemies by weaving theories and propaganda, which uh, 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 that is which are impressed uh, on other owls. So he quotes Oyundi to emphasize his point by saying that fiction always makes sense to those birds that have experienced reality. So a little bird, one said. So uh, Moneybugs uh, argues that uh, not even the rains can wash the intelligence of Royal Owl, but Royal Owl tells him that even the rains don't exist. So Moneybugs agrees the rains don't exist, just like the rain of the owls. Royal Owl slaps him, <laughs> accusing him of treason. So he says he would have jailed Moneybugs had they not been in the cold clouds serving their jail term. So he sends money bags to go and shut up the weaver playing the flute, lest he snuff out that which keeps him alive. So, dear students, this is a very interesting act. So, what uh, we are told follows is that money bags agrees that the king's power is in const uh, that is a uh, incontestable but royal owl accuses him of flattering him only when he is around and threatens to deal with him so money bugs pleads and flatters royal owl but a voice tells him that royal owl has already deserted him and both parliament and royal trees are about to be seized at dawn because all the birds are tired of the hooting and looting so money bugs will be judged by Osoko in court and Oyundi shall prosecute him for the sins against the bad kingdom, which include murder of Osoko's family and contracting Oliktiga, a tabooed animal, to guard the royal trees. So Manibags denies the claim. The flute plays before uh, Osoko reappears. So Osoko tells Manibags, uh, dear students, uh, that it is over for him and the parliament, for the king has deserted him. So he plays the flute and Moneybug slowly wakes from his dream. He thanks the gods that it was just a dream and that he has another day to live. So uh, the veterinar, uh, uh, veteran uh, parrot, that is veteran P, the parrot enters gasping and in front, uh, uh, in front of, of him informs him that Arum Tibi has been found dead. So apparently, he died fighting his own reflection. He could be taken to hospital because uh, Nightingale was under instructions not to use the ambulance for seven nights after the passing of the moonlight law. So dear students, uh, Moneybug smiles at the audience before declaring Arum Tidi a steadfast and committed bird who exploited his talent in support of uh, the parliament. So he is uh, becoming uh, a hypocrite. We are seeing uh, some element of irony. So it is ironic for uh, uh, that is Moneybug to say that Arum Tidi died in the line of duty, that is uh, uh, in line of uh, uh, supporting the parliament, while in real sense uh, they planned for. Uh, Arum Tidi's death together with uh, his counterpart, that is the uh, <clears throat> that is a red string uh, of the strings family. So uh, he condoles him and wishes uh, that uh, may soul rest in peace. So he silences uh, veteran P when he asks about rumors and insists that Arum Tidi is a fallen hero for who he decrees on behalf of royal all that uh, we shall fly our flags at half-mast to show solidarity with uh, the family. So he also adds that Arum Tidi joins the list of the heroes to be celebrated on, that is, uh, the Heroes Day. The heroes that are to be celebrated on 
the Heroes Day and uh, is awarded a posthumous royal of EBH. So, uh, dear students, some of the uh, major or the striking uh, events that we have in uh, this uh, act is uh, that is uh, money bags, uh, the money bag uh, doubling up as a royal all and as a speaker of parliament all, and also switching roles as speaker, money bags, and sergeant at arms. Then we also talk about that is uh, the loyal alls uh, versus the rebel alls and Oyundi's allies uh, demon uh, who demonstrate against the moonlight tax bill uh, led by Oyundi. So then uh, we also talk about uh, that is uh, Arum Tidi changing his tune and sings freedom song. Uh, now note uh, the duty that he was given, that is to go and spread the propaganda. So the next thing that follows is, uh, that is uh, Arum Tidi's uh, demise after se uh, several disagreements in the, in the act. So we are uh, talking about, um, talking about act two, so in a, a nutshell, 